What I've Done. Written by Night Breeze. Read by no one and nobody. Chapter 27 Um, what is he doing? Akitesh whispered under her breath. I'm not entirely sure, Hazalk answered as he stared at the offered appendage. Alexander looked down at his hand, then back up at the two visiting aliens, as if realizing that he had done something wrong. Oh, uh, it's called a handshake. It's the formal greeting of respect among my people, he said, that odd shaky smile still on his face. I, I know what your traditional greeting is, but my people don't bow to anyone. Why? Is it impolite? Hazalk asked as he reached out and took the victim's hand. Alexander gripped the crin's hand firmly, then gave it two small shakes before letting go. No, it's just that, among my people, freedom is our most sacred treasure. Bowing kind of feels wrong, like I'm betraying that ideal. Or if we do bow, it is almost always in a mocking manner. Ah, oh, I understand. An odd custom, but I will keep it in mind, Hazalk said, folding his hands behind his back. Defending one? What is due? The White Queen asked under her breath, though Akitesh could still hear her. Alexander said something to her, something strange, in a language that was unfamiliar to the priestess, though whatever it was that he said seemed to leave the White Queen flabbergasted. But, true? The victim nodded, then fixed Akitesh with his soulless gaze. Well, since you're the one calling the shots, what happens now? We're only here to repair the damage that has been done, and protect you and your allies from further- Akitesh started to say, but was interrupted by Alexander. No. Akitesh looked worried at that. I- I assure you, we're only trying to- and I understand that. I believe you, but... Alexander trailed off, then shivered in fear. But there's no way that I'm going under one of your two species' knives. I understand if you... I believe you when you say that you mean us no harm. But that doesn't mean I trust you. At least, not fully. Alexander said, turning his back towards the two aliens. He then looked over his shoulder at his ulk, an uncertain expression on his face. Um, about those... Well, never mind. Alexander then started to walk away. His head bowed as he made his way towards the doors of the hall. Wait, defending one? What being wrong? The White Queen said. She only got a brief clipped reply from the creature, but there was something wrong about the quality of Alexander's voice. Akitesh couldn't really be sure, since he spoke in his native tongue, and she was unfamiliar with his species' social norms, but it almost sounded as if he was crying. I'm sorry, did we cause offense? Akitesh asked with a slight bow. No, it's fine. No wrong. Just need time. Thank coming for explaining thing. But time, the White Queen said with a wave of her hoof. Maybe come tomorrow, explain more. Talk more, but now need think. Need talk, sister. Tell a thing. For now, we'll take vessel. Let leave. Akitesh looked at her in shock. I thought you wanted us to leave and never come back. The White Queen raised an eyebrow at that, then turned to leave. I not know defending one see. Not know make trust, but he hate that much. Then turn. That people give chance. I see, Akitesh said, as she slithered to follow the equine. To be honest, she really didn't see. She was just glad that no one was shooting lightning at her. What's going on? Where are we going? Hazalk asked, having not understood most of the conversation, or indeed most of what had happened. We are being escorted back to the landing craft but we've been welcomed back to continue our discussion, Akitish answered, 
his ulk's antenna twitched thoughtfully. So, things went better than we hoped. Whatever Alexander did must have really made an impression, his ulk said thoughtfully. Though I must ask, how did he know about that title of mine? Akitesh thought about it for a second, then shook her head. Not now. I'll explain once we get to the shuttle. I needed a place to think. Some place that wasn't here. A place I could be alone. The concept of alone seemed to drive out all other conscious thought, even going so far as to make me completely miss the guards that were standing outside the doors. Is finished? One of them, a white unicorn with a mane of alternating dark and light blue stripes, asked, bringing me back to reality. I briefly remembered that Sun had used that translation spell earlier on him, but that hardly mattered to me at the moment. I need to go somewhere. Somewhere I can be alone for a little while. Is there any place like that? I asked the unicorn. He looked thoughtful for a bit, a hoof pressed to his chin. Before his face lit up. Think no place. Follow. I fell in line behind the unicorn without even thinking. I distantly registered that his armor was quite a bit different from the others that I've seen. But I didn't really care. I honestly had too much on my plate at the moment. Everything was in place. The guests were all here, the food was ready, music was already playing, and decorations were set up. So many ponies thought that party planning was easy, that anything could do. They were wrong. Party planning was a science, and a hard one too. For example, if there was more than 12 guests, that automatically called for a piñata. Though, if one of the guests had been a friend, then that meant that the piñata had to go on the back burner, just in case the new arrival had a fear of piñatas. However, as carefully as she had planned them, as precisely as she had orchestrated the events leading up to these things, Pinkie Pie couldn't plan for everything. I mean, how am I supposed to plan for royalty scooping away the guest of honor? Pinkie thought to herself as she sighed into the table. It's not fair! I mean, this will be the second party I've planned for him that he's missed! That's a first! A first! Is... is Miss Pie going to be alright? Pinkie heard Luna ask somewhere nearby. Honestly, I don't know, Pinky heard Rainbow answer. She's, uh, very dedicated to her parties. Alex not showing? Well, she can understand why. It's just that this is sort of the second party he's missed. There was a pause at this. Well, that is not quite true. He's only late. He may still come. Pinky's head shot up at that, her face full of hope as she stared at the Lunar Princess. Do you really mean that? Luna was about to answer, but something about the look in Pinky's eye gave her pause. Um, yes, I really do, but Miss Pie, I don't... Whatever Luna was about to say, however, went unheard, as the pink pony dashed away in a flurry of activity. Balloons were added, more streamers were thrown, and Luna was fairly certain that a piñata that size had no business even existing. Seriously, the thing was bigger than she was. She was sure that it shouldn't have been able to fit through the door. In fact, Luna hadn't seen it pass through the door. It just seemed to... appear. What did I do? Luna asked, completely confused. Uh, you probably want to go get Alex now, Princess. Rainbow said uneasily. Pinky can go a little overboard, and if he doesn't show... Rainbow gave an unpleasant shiver. Come now, it cannot be as bad as... What? Luna started to say but trailed off when she noticed Pinky wheel in a heavy piece of artillery and start loading it with confetti. I'll be right back, Luna said as her horn started to glow. After what had happened with the alien creature earlier, even though the human had proven extremely capable in managing the situation himself, the princesses still felt it prudent to make sure there was a way that Alex could be easily located. Whether it was because he had been full napped, or more likely, if he had accidentally teleported himself during one of his magical searches, it would probably be a good idea to have a way of finding him. Dream magic was useful for this, but flawed. Luna couldn't get an exact location through the ether, so it made the process more akin to finding something by nose rather than sight, which made it inadequate for this task. No, what they needed was a quick way to pinpoint his exact location. To this end, when the medical staff had proposed an implanted biological monitor, Luna had insisted 
that they also implant a magical beacon. This made it easy for those with scrying devices tuned to that signal to locate and teleport to his exact location. In fact, a scrying device was completely unnecessary, provided whomever was looking for it knew the signal's wavelength, was sensitive enough to the frequency, and was close enough to feel its pulse. No, finding the human wasn't a problem, though Luna was confused at his whereabouts. Why are you in the castle library? She asked as she disappeared in a flash of light. When she reappeared, she immediately noticed that the castle library was a lot emptier than it was normally. Sure, it was a private library, but Celestia would more often than not have students from her school come here to study. Instead, all Luna found was Captain Armor and one of his troops guarding Alex as he sat, staring into the magical fireplace. Princess Luna, Captain Armor said with a salute. I apologize for not... At ease, Captain, Princess Luna said as she drew closer. Her eyes locked on the huddled form of the human. I can already guess as to why you did not return once the meeting was over. I take it that it did not go well? I actually don't know. He was in there for a very long time, but once he left, he said he needed some alone time, Shining Armor said as he dropped his salute. He's been staring into the fire ever since we got here. Hasn't even moved an inch. I'll take it from here, Luna said as she moved closer. Once she was beside the human, she settled down on her belly next to him, briefly taking the time to scan him to ensure that the translation spell was still active. As soon as she was satisfied that it wasn't going to fail anytime soon, she cast the same spell on herself. If the human had noticed her, he did not show it. He didn't even twitch when her wing gently brushed his side, his attention completely glued to the flickering light that danced on the logs before them. The two just sat there, neither willing to break the silence that had fallen. However, no matter how profound or deep something is, all things must eventually end. Tilt, Moon. Do you have any monsters in history? Any pony monsters? Alex asked, his voice oddly neutral. The question caught Luna off guard. She was briefly tempted to hide the darker aspects of her species from the alien visitor, but quickly discounted that notion. After all, he would find out eventually. Well, yes. Yes, we do. Our worst monster was King Sombra, a unicorn who enslaved an entire empire and was further bent on expanding his influence to the whole world. But even then we have others. Thieves, brigands, murderers. My sister and I try to stamp them out, but it is doomed to an endless conflict. Alex's gaze didn't waver from the fire as he listened. But once Luna was finished, he let out a sigh of relief. Moon, I, he started to say, but seemed to think better of it. No. Moon, let tell story. Story of greatest monster and he who knows history. Luna wasn't sure where the human was going with this, but she was careful to pay attention. While Alex had been open about many aspects of his homeworld, he had been fairly close-lipped about things like history and culture. Anything she could learn would greatly increase her understanding of him. There once was a nation, where people feel powerless. They just lose war. Lose war bad. Not conquered, but forced pay debt for war. People become poverty. Feel crushed. But person come. He talk. He tell he make people strong if take power. Make enemies rude day they hurt nation. Rally people behind flag. Make promise for a better day. I take it these were lies told to the desperate? Luna asked. She had heard similar speeches from despots before, and she had a feeling she knew where this was going. No, it was truth. Make people strong. One problem. He make only him people strong. Luna looked at the human curiously. I'm not sure I understand. We, we not have horns, wings, like you, but still different people. Different color skin, different color hair, different jawline, different eyes. Silly differences. Small differences. Alex said, a little hesitantly, but plowed on through. But enough for small people. Small people. Small minds. Hate different. Hate people. This man, he decide his race best race. Decide superior race. Decide all other race serve master race. He took in a deep breath, then let out explosively. <sighs> 
or die. That seems incredibly silly and incredibly petty, Luna said, after a few seconds of thought. When his people found out that was what he wanted, did they not throw him out of power? Alex just gave a mirthful chuckle at that. <laughs> Wish did. Would have stopped much death, much destruction. Unfortunate, some agree. Some not, but want power. Others, scared. Follow along because minor. The rest, not care. Oh, oh my, Luna said, after the full weight of what Alex was implying struck her. The human didn't pause in his depiction of this horror. This monster, he start war. Big war. War cover whole earth. But not all. While war against whole earth. Also war within. War against own people. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean he waged war on his own people? And how would he wage war on this whole world at the same time? I thought his people lost the last war and were suffering under poverty. Luna asked, thoroughly confused. Alex shrugged a bit. Monster find allies. Allies to help. Who think same, want same. Become powerful. Powerful enough not worry about enemies. Start war. Think can destroy. Not only that. Other countries ignore threat for time. Monster not attack all. Start small. Move on. When people realize he not stop at single country. It was too late. Luna finished for him. What about this war against his own people? Alex's face twisted into a grimace. His country, not completely filled with his people. His people called... At this point, Alex said a word that could not be translated through the spell. Instead, all that Luna heard was what he originally said. It was a confusing mix of soft, light tones, ending with a hard sort of humming sound. The closest approximation she could guess was, Aryan. But other people of the country, too. He think they dirty, they threat. So, he tried best to stamp out. Make country pure. That, that is horrifying. Why are you telling me this? Because not everyone agree. Alex said, a hint of pride creeping into his voice. There are many people, hide people, be exterminate. One person particular, person in government, but hate monster. Hate ideal, hate war. Want stop. This person do best, hide people different from monster. Smuggle out country. Save many lives. Alex said as he hugged his legs closer to himself. Luna looked at the human closely. Her suspicions raised. Alex, was this person you? The one who saved those people? Alex shook his head, tears coming to his eyes. N no, not me. Person, not me, he said. He then hid his face in his knees before finally answering. No. Nope person my grandfather. Luna's eyes went wide with this information. Wait, how long ago was this war that covered your whole world? Sixty. Seventy years? Long time. My people still remember. Still remember horrors caused by... At this, the human said another complicated untranslatable phrase, but it sounded like Nazi. But we learn mistake. Not cause again. Not hate as much. World slowly heal. Time go on. So, why tell me this? I'm glad that your people were able to defeat their monster. But how does this relate to the here and now? Luna asked, still somewhat bewildered. It important. Because met bug, Alex said with a shrug. Bug not important. All bug clearly evil. As he spoke, Luna couldn't help but catch the self-mocking tone in his voice. All bug surely hate. All bug monster. Oh, bug monster. The human trailed off, then fell silent. They sat there for a long time, neither saying anything as Alex worked himself up to what he really wanted to say. Except, not this bug. He finally said, as he let his face fall into his knees again. I, I look into bug calculation device. I look evidence. Look for one, too. To your world, to me, to all. There was another silence, which was only broken by the crackling coming from the magical fireplace. Except, not there. They not hear hurt. 
but stop their version Nazi. This bug. This bug. He fell silent again, before finally looking at Luna for the first time since he started speaking. Even with the odd, completely black nature of his eyes, Luna could still see the pain, the self-loathing, the fear. But more importantly than any of that, she could see a glimmer deep in there. A glimmer of something other than regret and terror. The bug. Exactly like Grandfather. If you're enjoying this reading, consider checking out the non-copyright infringement version available on Amazon Prime. See link in video details for more information.